Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video we have learned how to create an offer or an answer and exchange their session description to each other. But in this video we are going to learn how to exchange the ICE candidates. So whenever a local description is set there will be some ICE candidate. So back to where we initialized our RTC clients right here. This observer object that we have passed to our artist client here will notify whenever there is an ICE candidate. So whenever an ICE candidate is generated, I want to add that on my peer connection and also send it to my opponent or my friend that he can also set it inside his peer connection. So to do that, I'll create a method inside my RTC client class. I'll call it add ice candidate and pass the candidate to it. So I'll create a member. And right here, I'll check if my peer connection is not null, I'll add ice candidate. Just like that. And now it's time to send this ice candidate to my friend or my target. But right here, I don't have any information about my targets. So where should I get it from? There's a simple answer that either when we are calling someone or we are receiving a call, he have information about my opponent or my target. So I'll create a private var target of type string is equal to empty string. And I'll go back where I want to call someone and I'll set the target to target username that's et dot text to string. So there's one situation that I'm calling someone, so the target is going to be this one and whenever I'm receiving a call right here on the offer received, so the target is going to be message dot name. Okay, so we are set. We now have our targets, so we can exchange the ice candidates right here. First of all, I want to create my candidate is equal to a hash map and the SDP meet to p0. That is CP meet, also a CP M line index to and the SCP candidate to p0 so after i've created my candidate map i'll send it to my opponent that send it's going to be a message model the type is going to be ice candidate and the name is going to be username the target is going to be my target and the data is going to be candidate okay this situation is for sending the ice candidate but we also have to watch the ice candidate receiving here so i'll create another case and i'll call it ice candidate so i'll run it on ui thread and I want to convert a JSON model from the simple data that we are receiving from the WebSocket. So I'll create a new Kotlin class and call it Ice Candidates model. So inside that, I'll have SDP mid of type string, CPM line index of type string also, and SDP candidate of type string. Sorry, this one is double or float. Okay, let's go back to my call activity. I'll try to convert my simple data from string to my Irish candidate model. To do that, I'll create an instance of JSON. And I'll go back here and I'll create a val of receiving candidate and the value is going to be JSON from JSON and the value 
is going to be the stringified JSON. So to do that, I'll create a JSON string first like this. And then I'll bring it back to the JSON object. And the class model is going to be ice candidate model class.gel. Pretty simple. After I created a JSON object of this candidate, I want to add this on my per connection. I can also do that using RTC client add candidate. So it's going to be an ice candidate. So as you can see, a CPMID is going to be receiving CPMID. CPM line is going to be math at two int or two int exact and candidate CPM line too long. And the third value is going to be CP itself. So receiving ice candidate, CP candidate. So right now we're ready to check our application. Let me start my emulators. And also don't forget to start your WebSocket server. So I'll log in as 24 for API 24 and 29 for API 29. So if I want to call 29, you'll see 24 is calling you if you answer you can see the session description is being transferred and also the ice candidate you see there is a lot of ice candidates is being exchanged so there's one more step you have to do is that whenever an stream is added to your peer connection let's say a remote stream you want to show it inside this surface view renderer so let's go and handle it like this we do tracks and if it's not null get the first element of it and then add sync to the binding dot remote view pretty straightforward and to use the real camera I'll use my phone as the second device I'll log it as Masood you can check it here and API 30 as my other device I want let's say call Masood I'll answer on my phone as you can see yeah that's me but we have to remove this progress bar after the connection established so I'll go back and right here after receive an answer I'll set this progress bar to gone and also after receiving an offer right here okay let's test it one more time I'll log it as my name I'll call it answer it yep the progress bar is gone and the call is established now so that's it for this video